Hello and welcome to this tutorial on HDLC and PPP encapsulation. Just as there are layer 2 protocols on the local area network, for instance Ethernet, there are layer 2 protocols on the wide area network. And in particular, we're going to look at these two protocols, which can be found on point-to-point -point serial links. So we'll look at high-level data link control protocol, the functions, the frame itself, and the important characteristics to know about it. And then we'll look at point-to-point -point protocol, and again, the functions, and we'll look at two sublayers of the point-to-point -point protocol, and of course, the important characteristics to know about it as well. We begin with HDLC, and this is a very simple protocol, meaning it doesn't do a whole lot for us. What it does do is provide error detection, and it's very similar to Ethernet in how it does it. So first, if it discovers an error, it simply discards the frame. And it goes about checking for errors by using a frame check sequence, which is located in the trailer of the frame. So those are very similar to how Ethernet goes about error detection. Also, it doesn't perform any kind of error recovery. It leaves that up to higher layer protocols. So if an error is discovered, it simply discards it and doesn't do anything else. Pretty simple. Now, the HDLC frame will attempt to identify its data. And what I mean by that is you have the layer 3 packet, and that's put into a layer 2 frame. And the protocol used at the layer 3, the layer 3 protocol, needs to be identified. And so when we talk about identifying that protocol, the contents of the HDLC frame, we have to talk about two versions of HDLC. And this is where it gets a little interesting, a bit nuanced. First, there was the original standard implementation of HDLC. And then Cisco created its own version, known as the Cisco proprietary version. So it helps a lot to look at the frame to understand the difference between the original and the, and the Cisco version. On the top here, we have the standard HDLC. And in the header, it has a few t uh, fields. And it has its data. And then the frame check sequence in the trailer. And that's pretty much all there is to it. On the bottom, we see the Cisco implementation. And it differs by one field. Cisco added a type field, which is used to identify the protocol in the data. So standard HDLC couldn't do that. So you were limited to one network layer protocol on a serial link. However, Cisco HDLC made it possible to use multiple networking layer protocols. Um, and HDLC was able to identify which protocol was, with, was in each data packet. And that is the primary difference between the two. Um, a few things to note here as well. Addressing, the field on the, ad the address field isn't really mandatory. It's, it's not really helpful because you're talking about a point-to-point -point link. So if I'm talking to you, I know what your name is. I don't need to address you every time I say something to you. So it's a bit redundant. It's also important to note that whichever version of HDLC you use, you need to use the exact same side on both ends. So if you're going to configure a router, both routers need to use the same type of encapsulation. And, and sometimes people just assume it's one or the other. With Cisco HDLC, you can only use it with other Cisco devices. So if you're connecting uh, two routers with a serial link and one of them is not a Cisco router, use the standard or the original HDLC. If you have two Cisco routers, you can go ahead and use the Cisco proprietary version. Next, we have PPP, or the point-to-point -point protocol. PPP was created after HDLC, so there are some improvements here, and it's a richer protocol. So first, in terms of features, it has much more than HDLC. It provides authentication. It provides compression. Um, it also provides something called multi-link PPP, and that's used to load balance over several different links using PPP. So it has some pretty cool stuff there which HCLC just doesn't have. It also supplies error detection, and it uses a frame check sequence as well, so it has that base covered. And when it comes to identifying the contents, um, there is a protocol type field, which is standard in the PPP frame. So by default, it identifies the protocol type used, the layer 3 packet. And that means that PPP is vendor neutral. 
So if you're connecting a Cisco router to a non-Cisco router, you can use PPP if you wanted to to get the features, and it doesn't matter that you're using two different vendors uh, at each end. Finally, just to note, there are sublayers within PPP. The first one to be aware of is the network control program. And that is responsible for the encapsulation of the different types of networking protocols. So think of it as being concerned with the layer three protocols in the packet that gets put into the layer two PPP frame. The other sublayer is called the LCP or the link control protocol. And that's more focused on the layer two options of the WAN link itself. So setting up that connection. They both work together, and they're both part of PPP. We don't get deeply into them in detail here, but it's just important to be aware that this protocol is bigger and is more feature-rich, and it has a lot more to it than HDLC. Let's summarize what we've gone over. So we are talking about Layer 2 protocols for point-to-point -point serial links. And there are two, HDLC, which comes in the original standard, and the Cisco proprietary. The Cisco proprietary can identify the layer three networking protocol in its data. And then there is PPP, point-to-point -point protocol, and that came after HDLC. It's more robust, has more features, and is vendor neutral. You can use it between devices from different vendors. And that's it. Thanks for watching.